Alright, what's up you guys? I just kind of figured I'd take a minute today to explain a little bit more about the DCCD and then the VDC. I'm not going to waste your time, let's just kind of get right into it. So DCCD stands for Driver Control Center Diff and then VDC stands for Vehicle Dynamic Control or your SI mode. It's the same thing. Now with that DCCD you're going to have Auto Plus and then you're going to have Auto Minus. You're also going to have a manual mode too, but I'll touch more on that in a second. It's kind of got a lot of more intricate parts. So with Auto Plus, you're going to have more of a front wheel bias, and that's kind of good for, you know, snowy situations or ice, basically anywhere where you might lose traction. And then you're going to have Auto Minus, which is more of a rear wheel bias uh, torque split. And that's more of a, you know, racetrack type of setup. It gives you more confidence in corners, and it, like I said, puts most of the power towards the back wheels, if that's what you want. Now, the DCCD, like I said, is a third differential, but it's an electronic differential that you, the driver, can control. And the way that it kind of takes into effect all those things is, you know, it uses yaw, braking force, uh, throttle input, and g-force, all types of things to kind of just set the specific parameters for how you want to drive it. Now there is a manual mode as well, but if you're like me and you don't know too too much about the DCCD, I would kind of stick away from it just because you do have the potential to really break your car. This isn't a horsepower, uh, wow. It's not a horsepower split like everyone thinks it is. It's actually a torque split, so it's just sending power to you know your front or re rear set of wheels. It's not splitting your horsepower like everyone thinks. With that being said, I would stick away from the manual mode just because it gives you free range to kind of really play with the differential, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can really badly mess up the car, destroy your diff, and an R180 differential for an STI is really expensive. Upwards of around 12 to 1400 bucks. But that kind of sums up the DCCD. I'm going to start moving on to the VDC now, which stands for Vehicle Dynamic Control. So with that, you've got your three modes. You've got Intelligent Mode, you've got your Sport Mode, and then you've got Sport Sharp. Your Intelligent Mode is basically going to be kind of like your gas-friendly, eco-friendly mode. It's going to, you know, you're going to hit lower boost and you're going to save more gas because of it. Your throttle mapping is going to give you more of a balanced out, smooth, efficient feel. And it's basically just kind of more of an... Uh, it's basically just, you know, more of an environmentally friendly performance type mode. And then you've got your sport mode, which is just your default mode, the driving mode that you're always in. So when you start up the car, it's going to be in sport mode from the jump. But then there's sport sharp, which is the fun mode. That's more of the track oriented mode where basically you hit boost quicker and you've got way more responsive throttle feel. Essentially, all the VDC does is really just change the amount of throttle percentage that the user is using user is using. Essentially all the VDC really does is just change the throttle percentage that the driver has at that time. So for example, if you're driving in intelligent mode, you'll have probably around, you know, anywhere from 0 to 70-75% throttle response. And then in your sport mode, you're obviously going to have full range of throttle, so you know, you can floor it and be at 100%. But then you've got your sport mode, which is double what Oh shit. But then you've got your sport sharp mode, which is double what the sport mode is. So for example, if you're using 10-15% throttle in sport mode, it's going to translate to 20-25% in sport sharp. Like I said, sport sharp allows you to just hit that sweet, sweet boost way quicker. Now, with that being said, I guess now I got to kind of figure out a way to show it to you visually, right? Yeah. Alright, so I hopped into Forza Motorsport 7 because I figured maybe I could try to show you something here. Um, down here we got the balance bar, and right now I'm at the uh, 59 rear, uh, 41 front torque split, and this is going to act as our uh, auto plus and auto minus setting. So, like I said, right now it's at its default mode, and I'm going to show a driving clip and kind of explain how it feels as I was driving. So, driving the car right now just on, like, you know, the uh, stock torque split, it doesn't feel necessarily terrible. However, it's not really necessarily great either. Um, as you can see, the turns are kind of wide, but that's only because, you know, it, it was really difficult to try to get in without understeering a lot. Uh, but that changes with the auto minus setting, which I'll show you next real quick. Alright, so we're back in the tuning menu, and I'm going to go back to the balance bar. And, uh, like I said, that was 5941, which was, like, the stock torque split. I'm gonna go down to auto minus, and this would be, like, one or two ticks down. So, like, 70% rear, maybe, like, 30% front. That seems about right. And then we're gonna go on track like that and see how it feels. 
All right, and then this is the auto minus setting, which you'll kind of see a difference in a second after the straightaway, but uh, what I was able to feel was my turn in response was way sharper. I just got a lot more confident in my turns and my tail end definitely wanted to, you know, break loose a little bit more, but was still just enough traction to keep myself on the road. So that was good. All right, and then we're moving on to the Auto Plus setting now. So this one, like I said before, is just really good for rainy days, snowy days, or just gravel, or if you just want more of a front wheel biased car, uh, Auto Auto Plus is definitely the way to go. Um, it's also more predictable, but it definitely gives you a little bit more understeer than just your regular torque bias or, uh, excuse me, Auto Minus. So just be careful with that. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that I had it on a rainy setting, that way I could show you guys the difference. So, the way that it's driving right now, it feels like it has a regular torque split just because we're driving in a rainy situation. So, like, I feel very planted, you know, just in every single corner. I feel like I'm, I know where I'm going. However, if this was in a dry situation and we were just, you know, on regular pavement and there was no rain, I would be understeering so much and it would not be pleasant. All right, I really hope that that kind of gave a good idea of how the DCCD works. So, like I said, that first one was our regular torque split. That second one was our auto minus with, with the, uh, I believe, 70-30 torque split. And then that last one, which was a 35 front, uh, 65 rear. Honestly, I'm really bad at math, but that was our auto plus torque split. So, I hope that kind of showcased it pretty well. If not, I apologize, and I'll try to remake this video again. Uh, but now, I'm going to move on to the VDC for you guys. So actually, because of some difficulty with editing, I'm going to make this a two-part video. So I'm going to put this video up today, and then either tomorrow or maybe Wednesday or something like that, I'll put up the VDC video. But hope you guys enjoyed. Please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned.